Welcome to Take Two, the talk show where we take two actors and get two takes on the real lives of working performers. I'm your host, Jeff Savage. In many adventure tales, our heroes often encounter a motley crew of characters that can aid them in their quest, provide valuable resources and feedback, and bring a sense of camaraderie and shared experiences and common goals. It has been said that birds of a feather flock together, and as diverse as the acting world is, actors can find a sense of belonging with others in their respective genres and niches. In my own acting journey, I have found kinship and a connection with some of the most incredibly hardworking and driven talent. And today I brought two of them on set with me to talk about their own adventures in acting. Lawana Dyer and John Gushin are not only my contemporaries in the world of voiceover, they are also great friends of mine. And I look forward to letting them tell you more about what makes this profession such a rewarding and fun endeavor. All right, let's do this. Luana, John, welcome to Take Two. Thanks for having me. Thanks, it's great to be here. Awesome, awesome. Really excited for our conversation today. As you all know, uh, Take Two is a show about uh, the adventures in acting. Today I want to uh, ask Luana and John here, and you know, let's start from the very beginning. You know, what inspired you to pursue a career in acting? Where did you begin your adventure in acting? Luana, I want to start with you today. Okay. Well, I began my adventure in acting in commercials. I loved watching jingles as a child, and I just knew one day that that was going to be me. That's what I wanted to do. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Is there a particular jingle that comes to mind as something that you remember as being something you would sing around the house as a kid? or anything? Yeah. Uh, Kit Kat. Give me a break. Give me a break. Break me up a piece of that Kit Kat bar. All right, so John, same question to you. What was the genesis of your journey? How did you uh, begin your adventures in acting? Well, acting for me has happened in different stages throughout my life. Uh, first, as a young child in elementary and middle school, being on stage and in plays, and then moving into high school, participating in more structured events like speech competitions. And um, over the course of time, I took a break from it and then came back. And now I'm in voice acting and corporate narration and an audiobook. Oh, fantastic. Fun. Fantastic. And, uh, you know, there's no two journeys are the same. Every actor comes from this from a, from a different starting point at different, st- at different points in their lives as well. But uh, the three of us, <laughs> we all met in one common crossroads, which was a place called the One Voice Conference, which is a voiceover conference here in Dallas, Texas, that brings together, you know, incredible speakers. There's great trainings, breakout groups, um, networking, camaraderie. You get to hang out with your peers that you don't often get to see uh, throughout the year. Um, one of the big takeaways from that conference Uh, experience was starting an accountability group. Uh, In what ways do you think accountability groups contribute to personal and professional growth of actors? John, I'm going to throw this back to you first, and then uh, what do do you think about that? Well, first to make clear, accountability is not shaming and holding people, give me a breakdown of everything that you've done. It's more of a collective sharing experience where we're all in it together and we all have common struggles, but also it's a time to celebrate achievements as well. And the accountability comes in providing that sharing. And so um, it's been very valuable to get tips, even the slightest thing, like Luana and I were at dinner one time talking about live sessions, and I was worried about how my sound might be trickling through the background noise. And so we talked through those kinds of things to more larger uh, experiences like how much money you're bringing in and auditions and conversion rates and things like that. Yeah, great. Uh, Luana, what's your, uh, what's your take on accountability groups? How are they important to actors in, the, uh, in, in their personal growth and development? Well, I would say not just for actors, but in life. Uh, if you're married, in your marriage, being connected with other married couples, mm. uh, exercising fitness, if you want to eat right and be healthy, sure. have longevity, it's good to be around others that are interested in the same things as you. So um, I would say it's a great, a great opportunity to connect with others as well as be able to achieve your goals being connected with everyone else. Gotcha. And uh, speaking of goals, the acting journey, uh, you know, we all start somewhere, but we always have some place that we want it to go. 
you know, uh, what are your long-term goals as an actor? Uh, Luana, do you have a dream role or a specific niche that you want to master in, uh, in the realm of acting? Oh, wow. I do. I want to do more film and television. Oh, lovely. Yeah, film and television. I've done some commercials, so commercial acting, voiceover, as well as on camera. Um, that's a major goal for me. And for voiceover, my goal is to work from anywhere in the world. It's fantastic. You know, and that also is a great opportunity to say that as a voice actor nowadays, you don't actually have to physically go to the big city recording yeah. studio. As long as you have a, you know, a quiet sound of, you know, area and a great equipment and a strong internet connection. Yeah. You, know, you can do anything <laughs> from anywhere in the world at any time of the day, okay. which is a, which is an amazing uh, opportunity to just have that ability to do that. John, um, you know, what, what's your dream role? Like, where do you see your acting career going from, from here? It's shifting. Um, I think that during the course of my time, I've thought that voiceover would be headed in one direction and it has changed course based on new opportunities that have come about. Currently, I am doing a lot of audiobook narration. That was not the plan initially. Uh, I did my first couple of audiobooks, was okay on it, took a year off, and then a publisher found me on my website. And I started narrating audiobooks for them after we were in touch. And that has continued to progress. But I've also picked up some corporate narration. Uh, for me, I really thought that I would dive into sports. I have a sports broadcasting background. So I thought sports audiobooks, that's where I'm going. And I would still like to do that. But I've also had an opportunity to do some biographies and memoirs, uh, American history and the like. So I'd like to continue down that road as well and see what happens. It's awesome. You know, it is awesome when your passions can guide your journey. Because mm -hmm. in the world of voiceover, you know, we become experts in all sorts of different subject matters uh, just based on the on the jobs that we book. Oh, yeah. And when it's passion, something you're passionate about that can guide your direction, that's a really great, you know, way to, you know, consider how you're going to move forward with that. But, you know, some actors are lucky in that they do it full time and that they're that's all they do. They wake up, they eat, breathe, sleep, acting, and you know, they do nothing else. But for the, for the majority of actors out there, there is other factors. There is, there's a work, there's other jobs, there's raising a family, there's going to school. Work-life balance is a term we hear a lot these days. Uh, how do you balance personal and professional life with the, you know, the demands of an acting career? Uh, Luana, what do you, what, what's your take on that? I will not be able to live without my calendar, uh, a written calendar and an electronic calendar, a family calendar, calendars everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Because everyone needs to be connected and, and knowing what we're supposed to be doing, where we're supposed to be going. Um, I do have a child and she's very active. So drop offs and pickups and everyone needs to know um, where she needs to be. She needs to know where she needs to be <laughs> so she can either get on the bus or she's a walker on that specific day. Um, so we utilize calendars and they're very, very effective for our family. Uh, some people like whiteboards. So that's another resource that you can look up if that's something that you're into. Um, but yeah, there's really no balance per se. It's prioritizing the priorities constantly. Sure, sure. Uh, especially for voice actors. Sometimes we have an audition that comes in and it's in ASAP. It has to be done quick, fast, and in a hurry. So if you're not able to do that, you have to communicate that to your agent or if you can get it done, jump in there, knock it out and carry on with the rest of your day. But it's always constantly juggling priority. Yeah. You know, acting uh, careers tend to be, you know, things that things flare up and oh, things, yeah. are, things happen to happen now. And when you have schedules and things you have to work around, it can be very challenging to get the, you know, to shift things around, move them and move this time to here to have someone else pick mm -hmm. up, uh, pick up the, the daughter here, mm -hmm. do, do that thing. So it's a, uh, it is a very, uh, very challenging dance, I guess yeah. is a great way to put it. And you know, there's always an audition that you just wish you could have gotten done. 
but you didn't because there were other competing priorities. Gotcha. It, it, yeah. That's a that's a that's an important to, you know thing to consider as well when you when you always want to do your best and sometimes you just feel like mm. something slips through the mm -hmm. fingers because of that. John, uh, what's your view on work life balance? How do you view like? pursuing voiceover with, you know, having a, a corporate job as well? And uh, how do those two intersect with each other? Well, what I've looked to do is bring those worlds together. So being able to do voiceover in my corporate job, and I've been very fortunate to be able to be in position to do that so far. The audiobook narration, I'm a little bit lucky because I get about four to eight weeks to produce an audiobook. So I can find my pockets of time based around my other activities. Yeah. So one of the things that I have been trying to do is really focus on getting outdoors or staying active, playing tennis and pickleball, going to the gym, trying to lift a little bit, and then find those moments where I'm at home and I'm like, you know what, this is a great time to go ahead and knock out some narration. I also find that on the weekends, um, I'd like to nap. I like to get my nap. In. <laughs> but then I get up and I'm like, you know what? I'm feeling pretty good. Let's go in the studio right now and knock out some narration. And then I have a, an idea of what I need to accomplish in terms of time spent in finished audio, or I should say the amount of time in finished audio that I need to accomplish each week. So as long as I'm reaching that number, then everything stays balanced. That sounds good. Not having that pressure. Yeah, which yeah, not to say that I never feel pressure because there's so much work that goes into it and you still need to hit those timelines. So. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, Luana, John, is fascinating conversation so far. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned because after this break, we are going to have a fun interactive uh, exercise here with Luana and John. Put them in the hot seat for a fun game called Two Truths, One Lie. You're not going to want to miss it. Stay tuned. Let's face it. People tend to put trust in professionals that stand out from the crowd with a distinguished and unique personal brand. In today's competitive digital world, one of the most powerful ways to achieve this top of mind awareness is with a personal branding video. A personal branding video is a more engaging way to deliver your message. It generates more trust with your audience. It improves your online presence and it's an easily shareable marketing asset. Go to personalbrandingvideo.now.site for all of the details and upcoming dates for our next Personal Branding Video Day at Sync Lab Media. We'll see you at our next Personal Branding Video Day. Hi, I'm Jeff Savage, marathon runner and author of the number one Amazon bestseller, Savage Resilience, Conquer Adversity and Be Your Own Hero. In this powerful book, you'll discover correlations between what it takes to finish a marathon and what it takes to be successful in any long-range goal you may have. Order your copy of Savage Resilience today on Amazon or by visiting jeffsavageonline.com. The audiobook is also available on Audible and the iTunes Store on Apple devices. I'm Jeff Savage, and I encourage you to conquer adversity and be your own hero. Welcome back to Take Two. I'm having a fantastic conversation here with Luana Dyer and John Gushin. And we are going to have a fun exercise here where we are going to put them both in a hot seat to learn a little bit more about each other, but also to learn something that's not quite true. It's a game we like to call Two Truths, One Lie. And so in this game, Luana, I'm going to start with you. And you're going to reveal uh, two things that are true and one thing that is not true about a, uh, a category that I give you. John, you are going to then try to determine what, uh, what isn't true based on just the three options that she gave you. And we're going to, you know, kind of volley back and forth between those today. So, Luana, in the realm of highlights in your voiceover career, tell, the, uh, tell us two things that are true and one thing that's not true about your voiceover Ooh. career. Uh, I love to do video games. And I have done work with the WNBA. And I have I'm not the truth, right? Truth or a lie. Um, I've actually done a video game. So okay. that's three. Okay, yeah. absolutely. Uh -huh. John, which of those three things is uh, Luana not uh, being truthful about? 
I don't know. Um, I don't know that you've really done a video game. You don't think that's true? No. That's actually true. Oh, and, uh, so what was that was false in that regards? Uh, that I love video games. Oh my goodness! So you've, you've done a video <laughs> game, but you don't necessarily play them. Uh, yes, oh. I don't necessarily necessarily play them. However, I do I do like them, um, but I'm not an expert yet. Gotcha. I would say that. All right, John, uh, give us two travel destinations that you've been to and one that you haven't been to. Um, Turks and Caicos, London, and New York City. Ooh. Luana, which one has he been to? You have not been to New York. I have been to New York. I think you do. He's at that mass. I've not been to London yet, so that's London. probably next one of the few trips we have lined up next. Uh, I would love to go to London myself. It's uh, it's definitely a destination. They do a they do a great marathon in uh in London as well. So you know, in your acting journey, what is a situation where you found yourself completely out of your comfort zone, and uh, and how did and what did you do? Doing the video game, I didn't feel one hundred percent comfortable. Um, because I had never done very many before. And what I found was just relaxing, uh, settling into uh, grounding myself, you know, putting my feet on the floor, taking some deep breaths. Uh, and I was actually fine. But at the end of that session, my voice was gone. Oh. Because it wasn't used to being used that much uh, in a session. Um, so yeah, that was, that was a bit uncomfortable for me, but I got through it and I'm very grateful. Gotcha. John, in your voiceover experience and, uh, narration, is there anything that's taking you outside of your comfort zone that, uh, you know, made you feel uncomfortable and, and how did you deal with that? I would say that the most uncomfortable I have felt was actually training for voiceover. Okay. Because I went to an online voiceover school here in Dallas and a large focus was character acting. Mm. And I had come in thinking, oh, this they'll talk about, we'll train in corporate narration and e-learning. And it was largely character and anime based. Oh. And so I really had to channel creativity and you know, explore doing different kinds of voices and deliveries that I hadn't really done before. And the students in the class were all into that. <laughs> and th that was why they were there. And so... I didn't get the memo that there wasn't as much of the boring stuff that uh, we voice actors will end up doing. And over time, though, I got really comfortable with it. I just tried to be original, tried to enjoy it, and actually ended up putting my own DIY animated voice, or I shouldn't just say um, character voice, reel together. And so I have it in case anybody really wants to hear it. I, oh, we want to hear it. DIY <laughs> character voice, who knows? But, uh, you know, stepping outside your comfort zone can really push us to explore elements that we then bring back into our acting personas that really make us more well-rounded, make us a little bit more colorful, deepen uh, our perspectives on how we use our voice to communicate. Um, but, you know, I want to, uh, you know, just give the, you both the opportunity to, you know, to talk, uh, you know, to our audience, is there something that you're working on, something that you're plugging or... Uh, I want to give your website or any social media links to our guests so they can find out more about you. Luana? Sure. I'm Luana Dyer, and you can find me at LuanaDyer.com, um, or you can email me at Luana at LuanaDyer.com. Uh, I specialize in e-learning, corporate narration, uh, telephony, as well as commercial. Fantastic. John, uh, how about you? How can the audience uh, learn more about you and uh, what... What do you got going on in your plate? Sure, absolutely. So johngushinvo.com is where you can find my website. And the email is john at johngushinvo.com. If you're getting ready to go on a summer trip, you have days at the pool, long walks, uh, and would love to listen to an audiobook, feel free to check out my audiobooks in the nonfiction genre. I specialize in biographies and memoirs, history, and also sports, among others. So I'd love to have you uh, listen to my work and also rate it online. That's fantastic. Awesome. I love that. Uh, at this time, I want you both to, uh, to take an opportunity to talk to that one person who is watching the show today, 
somebody is just starting their acting journey and uh, they need a little bit of advice. Moana, what is one piece of advice that you would give to uh, somebody who's out there watching the show right now? If you are just starting your acting journey or VO journey, I would have you to get with a coach. Get with a coach that will hold you accountable and tell you the truth. If it's something that you're really interested in, you have to learn all sides of the business as well as the craft. Uh, it's a lot of work. So be willing to roll your sleeves up and jump right in there. I love that. Yeah, and that is, uh, that's important to note yeah. is that, you know, a lot of people look at the voiceover industry and they, and they say that looks fun or that looks like something I can do in my spare time. And when you get into it, you realize that it's a craft. It, it is. is a lot of hard work. It's a lot of training. Uh, professional voice actors make it look easy. And uh, so a lot of times, that's a lot of the training goes into that. Absolutely. So. All right, John, your turn. Somebody out there today is uh, just starting their acting journey. You know, what's one piece of advice that you might give to them uh, that they can learn from, from you today? Sure. I'm trying to take this advice myself. Try not to worry about the money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you're getting into voiceover, take the time to really learn about the business and explore different genres where you might fit in. And don't be afraid to pivot. If what you thought was is not turning out, try exploring a different avenue and find a way to make sure that voiceover is fitting into your life versus trying to go all in on voiceover and exclude other parts of your life that are important. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Very good advice. Very good advice. You know, I want to thank uh, thank you both, Luana Dyer and John Gushin, for being our guests here today on Take Two. Uh, I'm your host, Jeff Savage. You can find out more about me uh, by visiting my website, jeffsavageonline.com. Follow Take Two on social media. We're on LinkedIn and Instagram. And subscribe to our YouTube channel at Sync Lab Media Studio. You can find all episodes streaming there and also at Sync Lab Media Network. Luana, John, Pleasure having you on today. Thank Ladies you. and gentlemen, come back and see us again. Have a good day.
about your voiceover. Ooh, 